Hi there, First Cumberland family. I hope that you're having a wonderful morning and whatever time of day you watch this devotional, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, this is a devotional for December the 30th, 2020. We are rapidly approaching the end of the year. And um, I know I'm excited for 2020 to be over, but I also, there have been so many wonderful things that have happened this year. Uh, some good to go with the bad. I wanted to start off by showing you a toy that my kids got for Christmas. And I will admit that I've had um, a lot of fun playing with this little game. Um, and it's a little bit addictive once you start playing it. I'm going to show you how it works. And then I'm going to have to turn off the camera and take it to another room because it doesn't stop talking. So I will have to stop and come back. Here it is. It looks just like a regular old little baby Yoda, um, but it's actually a game of skill. So you have to do what it says as quickly as you can, and if you don't move fast enough, you lose. So I'll show you how it works. Bop it to start. So it tells you to bop it to start, so I'll go ahead and start it. I score 29. Bop it. Twist it. So I didn't do very well, and this thing is not going to stop talking. So I'm gonna turn the camera off, and there it goes. I'm gonna turn the camera off, and I'll be right back. I promise I had a reason for showing you the Baby Yoda game that my kids got for Christmas that, uh, that I, like I said, I have to admit, I've really enjoyed uh, playing that game, maybe a little bit too much. The reason why I wanted to show you that was because if you are into video games or if you've ever played video games, there's something about playing video games that has a, a pretty big draw for people, something that can be kind of addictive. The thing that makes them addictive is you get to start over every single time. You you can finish a game and if you didn't do as well uh, as you wanted, if you didn't get to the level that you wanted, you can play the game repeatedly. You can do it over and over and over. And every single time you start, you get a clean slate. And I know what you're all thinking, and if you've ever played video games, this is what you're thinking. You're thinking maybe this time is the time that I will get to the level that I want. Maybe this time is the time that I will play that perfect game. And I can tell you, I've not gotten any perfect games on the Baby Yoda. I don't think that there is a perfect game. So the performance impulses that we have when we want to do better and do better and do better on video games is something that you can kind of um, think of when you think of when you're making your New Year's resolution lists. It's kind of the drive to say, you know, I didn't do that well last year on something, so I would like a clean slate. I think the New Year is a time when all of us feel like we have a clean slate to start over, and it's a time when we might be able to achieve a higher level or do better better on something, uh, whatever that may be, um, in the coming year. You can say I wasn't the person that I wanted to be morally or fiscally or socially or spiritually, but you kind of feel like when the new year starts, you have a little bit of a do-over, a little bit of a clean slate to work on. So here's the first problem with that. God doesn't call us to fine-tune ourselves into better and better examples of of the human machine. This is in, in a devotion that, that I read, and I thought that the gameplay was something that would be perfect to think about that with. God is not calling us to play the game until we're perfect. He's not looking to work with perfect human beings. He's, he's looking to work with the imperfect human beings. And second, if we are truly with God, he's already fixed us. There's no need for you to make New Year's resolutions about fixing yourself. God loves you exactly the way that you are. God would say, the new is here. The game's been won and all the levels have been beat. So this year, when you're thinking about New Year's resolutions, it's not about the lists. What it's about is power and focus. You already have God's power. What will you use it to focus on with this year. Who will you focus that energy on? You can focus it on yourself, but you can focus that energy outwards and use God's power for good. So if you removed every item off of your New Year's resolution list that had to do with self-improvement, 
what would a list of absolutely Christ-centered resolutions look like? What would your list look like if everything was focused entirely on serving Christ and others on it? What would that list look like? So that's kind of a neat, uh, a neat thing to work about. So to think about, excuse me. So we don't all have to worry about having a do-over. It's something that that God is not looking for us to do. It's not He's not looking for us to be perfect. He's not looking for us to constantly be striving for that next level, you know, until we're exhausted. He is looking for us to uh, to be ourselves and to work within our talents and the things that we that we do best. So I want to leave you with this scripture that goes along with this whole devotion. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. This is a reading from 2 Corinthians 5 verses 15 and 17. Amen.